In this tutorial, we're going to look at the details of adding pages to a project in Rapid Weaver. And so in the getting started tutorial, we briefly looked at this. We added a single page to our project and we have called that the home page and it's listed here under the pages in the list. Now again, to refresh, we would simply click on the add button in the top left corner and that brings up the add page view. This is organized in a number of different ways and we're gonna look at some of this in detail. You will notice that we have the style text page presented first. This is a recently used page and so it's available right here below the search function which we'll look at in a moment. We're gonna skip over the add folder and add resource options for now because those are gonna be covered in a later tutorial. And then we'll go down to the first option underneath which is all plugins. Now you'll notice that the word plugins is used. That is the term for page types in Rapid Weaver. So any type of page that you add is technically called a plugin. And it's called that because not only do you have these built-in page types or plugins available, but third-party developers also develop plugins that add new options to this list. And so as you add more to your Rapid Weaver software, you can have those available here. And we'll discuss third-party plugins in great detail later on. But Rapid Weaver does come with these built-in page types or plugins. We have a blog, contact form, file sharing page, an HTML code page, an iframe page, markdown page, an offsite page, a photo album page, a sitemap page, and a styled text page. And the styled text page is the one that we've added to our project at the moment, which basically presents the layout like a word processor where we can add text and images to the page very easily. Now coming back here, you will notice that in addition to the all plugins view and list, we have a favorites option. We can favorite plugins in the add-ons manager, and we will look at that later. And when that is done, then there will be items available here. And so this is helpful because it lets you quickly access the plugins that you use most frequently. You don't have to navigate through this list, especially when you have third-party plugins installed, which would create an even longer list of options here. You can also divide and sort the add-ons or plugins into collections. And so that would be found here. We'll look at that when we look at the add-ons manager later. And then finally, the plugins can be sorted by developer. So at the moment, RealMac Software, the developer of Rapid Weaver, is the only developer listed because this is a just a basic installation of Rapid Weaver with no third-party plugins installed. So we don't see any other developers listed. Now, if we had purchased third-party plugins and installed those, then we could sort those plugins by developer and there would be more developers available here. So it's another way to allow you to filter the plugins that you have available. And then finally, we have a quick link to the manage add-ons area of Rapid Weaver. Again, we will look at that in a later tutorial to get more into detail about how to add plugins and add-ons and how to manage those to create favorites and collections. But for now, we're simply gonna go through the process of adding pages. So let's go back up to the all plugins view. And for example, if we wanted to have a blog on our website, then we would choose the blog style page. And so that would bring up this view. And you notice it's quite different from the style text page that we looked at previously. We are going to go through all of the details of all of these plugins in great detail in lesson two. So for now, we will go ahead and just um, look at the general ideas of adding pages. So now that I've added this blog page to my project, I want to give it a name. So I can click over on to the left where it says Untitled Page. When I double click that, it will bring up the option to rename. And so I can simply call this blog, for example. And let's say I wanted to add a contact form to my website. I'd go to All Plugins, choose the Contact Form page, and then I can call this Contact Us, for example. Now, as I add pages to my project, these pages are automatically added to the menu in the preview mode. So if I go to Preview, and look at this in my theme that I've currently selected, you'll find in the menu we have the home, the blog, and the contact us pages listed there. Now I want to go through a few other details and some other tutorials before we get into the um, all of the options available for creating menus in a website. But I briefly wanted to show you that as we add pages, those do become available in the navigation menu with that theme. So I'm going to go back to the edit view and take a look at a couple of other items one of which is the fact that this very first page that we added is considered the home page because it has this home icon. You'll notice that as we add pages to our project that they all have a unique icon that's associated with the type of page that is added. And so if we come back and add another style text page, 
we will see the icon here is different than it is here, even though these are both style text pages. And that is because this page is the home page of your website. And so it is going to have this house icon next to it. Now, if you add a page to your project and it becomes your home page because it's the first page in your project, and later you want to set a different page as home, you can do that by selecting the page that you want to make the home page and then right click or hold down your control key and click your mouse and you can choose set as home page. When you do that, that will switch the house icon and place it next to the page that you have selected. And I recommend that if you do that, then you sort this to the top by clicking and dragging up. And then that would place that at the top. And of course I would want to name that home. And then I want to rename this page to something different about us, for example. The final item that I want to mention here in this video is the dot that you see next to each page. This dot indicates that this page has been changed since the last time the website was published. Now we haven't published this website yet, and so all of these show a dot next to them because all of these have just been added and they have been changed and do affect the project. And so that is what the dot indicates. Now we are going to look at a bit more detail about that dot and what you can do about that when we get to the publishing section of these tutorials. But for now, I briefly wanted to mention why that is there so you understand the significance of that. And I will again go into more detail about that when the time comes. And so that will go ahead and conclude this tutorial about adding pages. We'll continue next talking about themes.